Hello friends and welcome to an episode of Books and Looks series. We are going to be talking about today The Chain by Adrienne McKinty. This is a thriller book so I'm really excited to dive into the scary depths of the thriller. I liked it a lot. I gave it a 9 out of 10. Of course, if you guys are interested in reading it on your own, I would definitely recommend. But skip this video if you don't want to talk about spoilers. There will be some spoilers in this story. Okay, so the story opens up with a mom named Rachel. She is she is someone who has breast cancer. She was recently divorced and she has a 13-year-old daughter named Kylie. And she's also getting a new job. So she's kind of in the middle of a lot of transitioning. So while all of that is going on, they do say that her 13-year-old daughter, Kylie, is waiting for a bus at the bus stop. And while she's waiting there, a random car pulls up and they're wearing ski masks and they have a gun and they tell her that, they, that she needs to get into their car right now. So well, these people go ahead and take Kylie to a basement of some sort. They are wearing ski masks, so Kylie doesn't recognize them or anything like that. And they kind of sound a little bit remorseful. They're like, everything's going to be okay. Just follow what we're saying and nobody's going to hurt you. Although they are carrying guns. They kind of are just seeming a little bit like they don't want to hurt her, but they just want her to listen. They said they have a sleeping bag for her. They have, you know, food for her and they have this camera and they don't want her to try anything crazy. So a few minutes after Kylie gets kidnapped, she gets this random unknown phone call that says you need to pay $15,000 in ransom and you need to steal another child in order for us to give you your child back. Literally crazy. But Rich is like, no, you absolutely have the wrong person. I cannot do this. I cannot kidnap anyone. And she's over there freaking out. All the chain basically tell her that if she doesn't do it, they will kill Kylie. So either way, she's not gonna get her daughter back unless she decides to cooperate. So she does what she needs to do. She runs to the bank, you know, she gets a loan out. She's able to get what she needs. She buys Bitcoin from an app that they want her to use like a secret dark web app and then she goes ahead and plans out the rest so she gets ski masks and she buys a gun and she does literally all that she can think of she starts planning a child to potentially steal she looks on facebook which is so crazy to me and she finds these people that like just basically lay out everything that they're doing like every second of the day and she finds her top five list of kids that she thinks she can steal because their parents basically announce where they are going every step of the way like that's just wild and crazy that she was even able to do that and i know that's a real thing but it's just wild and crazy she also starts thinking of a place to keep this child so she kind of goes to these beach houses and looks around the area and sees that they're vacant beach houses because this is kind of the winter time there's not a lot of people in the beach houses so she breaks into a beach house and decides that this is where she's going to keep the child she buys wood to keep the child in a soundproof basement. I mean, it sounds, you know, like she's really got this under control, but she's really just freaking out and trying to do anything and everything that she can do to get Kylie back. She ultimately decides that she really just cannot do this anymore by herself. She's gonna need a little bit of help. And she does have an ex-husband, but she doesn't really wanna get him involved because he's busy, like in a completely different state. So she contacts her ex-brother-in-law, who is an ex-Marine, and who kind of just knows, you know, a little bit about software engineering. So he knows a lot about computers and things like that. And they kind of ultimately figure out that the chain is tracking them through her MacBook and through her iPhone. So they decide to kind of shut off those things so that the people of the chain can't basically label where they're at and they can't overhear conversations so she asks pete and she also asks the people of the chain if it's okay if she brings someone along to kind of just try and help her but what nobody knows is that pete her ex-brother-in-law has been getting addicted to narcotics and he's kind of just not in the right mindset for things like this but as soon as he finds out kylie is kidnapped he decides that he is going to help rachel to help with pete they decide that they're going to kidnap this little boy who's supposed to be coming out of archery club and who walks home alone every single um, Thursday and every single Sunday because of the mom's reoccurring Facebook updates. So they decide that they're gonna do this on a Thursday when he's supposed to be getting out of archery club all by himself and walking to his house. But what they come to find out is that he actually ended up taking a different route. So they decide that they steal his sister instead because she was also walking home from the same archery club. So they put on their masks, they have their gun, and they steal the little sister of the boy that they were supposed to take. 
but this little sister is allergic to peanuts. So it kind of just makes things a little bit harder for them because now they have to worry about feeding her specific things. They take the little girl to their beach house that they found. They put her in the basement. They buy her games. You know, they make it seem like everything's going to be okay. Like we're only just keeping you for a little bit. And so they keep her kind of nice and contained. And then Rachel goes and contacts the chain people and says, hey, everything's done. And she tries to get her daughter back. So she go ahead and leaves the beach house and she leaves Pete with the little girl. She goes back to her house and tries to find a way to get Kylie back. And while she's gone, Pete messages her and says that he accidentally gave the little girl Rice Krispies and that she's having an allergic reaction and that Rachel needs to get back to the beach house immediately. This poor little girl is like choking and dying and they need to find an EpiPen immediately. So Pete runs out and tries to find this EpiPen. Meanwhile, while that's going on, Kylie, Rachel's 13 year old daughter, she's still locked up in this basement, but she's trying to um, break out. And so she finds out that the people come down, they give her food and they're always holding a gun. So she decides that that gun is gonna be her only opportunity to escape. So she kind of waits for the dad to come downstairs, give her her crackers, give her her meal for the day and she steals his gun. And she tries to shoot him and says, hey, if you don't let me go, I'm gonna shoot you. She tries to shoot, she's drawing blanks and she finds out that the that the gun doesn't actually have any bullets inside of it so she's very unsuccessful in trying to escape so back to the little girl that rachel kidnapped the one that's having the um epi pen needed very quickly because she's having an allergic reaction um the chain people contact her parents and they let her know the same ordeal that they let rachel know that you need to give us a ransom of a thousand like thousands of dollars and that you need to kidnap another child before you can get your child back so they are not allowed to contact the police obviously they're not allowed to talk about it they're not allowed to contact any authorities or else they automatically get their child killed so they're only really allowed to talk to the chain and talk to the person that has their child so they do end up um kidnapping an another child so that way kylie can be freed so they kidnap the child and then the chain people call her and say hey rachel we are going to let kylie go in a field and you can come pick her up at this address so she's very excited rachel's like finally i get my daughter back even though she has the little girl still locked up in her basement she's just happy to go get kylie and she drives to this 20 minute destination and she goes and picks up kylie reunited and the chain people tell her that she can let go of the hostage that she has in her basement to her family so they take her to a park they drop the little girl off the little girl's obviously fine now with the whole peanut ordeal they kind of figure that out and everything's fine in that scenario. So they take her to the park, they drop her off and they let her know that, she, you know, they're gonna contact her parents and that she can safely go back to her family. So they do that and then Rachel thinks that she is safe. She's out of the woodworks, everything's gonna be fine. But Kylie ends up having these horrible nightmares. She ends up wetting the bed a lot and she's just very traumatized by the experience as they all are but Kylie's just kind of taking it the worst right now. In that time that Kylie's having a really hard time, Rachel decides that she wants to talk about this whole chain ordeal online. So she anonymously posts something online and she tries to get some attention to try and figure out how she can stop the chain from doing this to other families. She's a bit crazy, you know, she, she's thinking it's over, but it's not really over because it's still traumatizing their family. So she just wants to get it completely gone, completely out of everyone's hair, never having to think about it again. So she meets this guy on the dark, dark web and they decide to conjure up this plan that they're going to try and stop the chain from doing it to anybody else. This man meets with Rachel at an airport. You know, they kind of try and stay out of the limelight since obviously the chain can kind of hear things and know things about them that they don't actually know about. So they, the guy tells her that he has this app that he created where he can trace phone calls and cell towers and kind of just trace where these phone calls are coming from. So he tries to get Rachel to call up the chain, let them know about things that are going on and hopefully they can locate the area. Rachel calls up her ex-husband and she says that she wants Kylie to go with the ex-husband so that she knows she's safe, that she's away from a completely different state and that she doesn't have to worry about Kylie as much while she goes ahead and tries to find these chain people and figure all of this stuff out. So Kylie goes ahead and stays with the husband and his new girlfriend named Ginger and they go away to Ginger's family home 
and just completely out of the state that where Rachel doesn't have to worry about it because she's doing this cell tower business. Book then goes to a part two. So it goes into a different story about how the chain was invented, which I was actually really excited that you can kind of get a little bit of a backstory on how the chain was invented. It tells you that these twins had a very dark upbringing in their life. It's these twins named Oliver and Margaret, you know, a lot of death, a lot of blackmailing in their life. So Margaret blackmailed a lot of kids growing up. She would steal their bunnies and she would write a ransom note and say, hey, if you want to get your bunny back, you, this is what you need to do. She would tell the girls that they would need to go um, steal things. They would need to go run out in front of the house butt naked and then they would take a picture of them. Just a lot of very dark, creepy things. And then they also end up killing their family. So Margaret and Oliver decide that they're gonna push their little brother off of a boat. So they kill him, they kill the mom, and then the dad is ultimately just completely in shambles because he's losing all of his family members. Because Margaret and Oliver had such a bad childhood and they killed everyone pretty much in their family, they go and they move in with their grandpa and the grandpa decides to name them different names. So the grandpa will name Oliver Ollie and instead of Margaret, he decides to name her Ginger. So you as the reader now know that Ginger was actually Margaret and Ginger is the lady that Rachel's ex-husband is dating who actually has Kylie right now in that completely other state. We know that as the reader, but Rachel has yet to know that in the book. So then the story bounces back to Rachel and how they end up indeed finding the cell tower. Her and Pete find the cell tower and they decide that they're going to go to the cell tower, you know, with guns and try to end this whole chain business. And what do they find when they get there? They obviously find that Kylie is with Ginger. And then she realizes that this Ginger lady is actually the woman from the chain. So this whole crazy big shootout ensues. They're shooting each other with rifles, shooting each other with guns because they find out that Ginger is the chain and that she has Kylie as well. So they're all kind of just shooting each other. Pete ends up getting wounded because Ginger shoots him. So he's down. So Rachel's like the only one that has to kind of like shoot everybody, protect Kylie and get the heck out of the situation. And Rachel does what the mama's supposed to do. And she goes ahead and kills both of the twins. So basically stops the chain for everybody else to have to worry about. Thankfully, she's the one that kind of ends the whole thing. And then they no longer have to worry about it because she, she killed both of the twins that were starting it all. So it was indeed a really crazy, really good story. Kind of like a mama bear story which i really relate with because i have two kids of my own and it was just very dark and very scary reading that book so i did ultimately give it a nine out of ten i'm really into thriller lately and hopefully i will see you guys in the next crazy book that i go ahead and read next time bye guys